Get ready, because the social enterprise revolution is here, and the future is female. My name is Melody Hosseini, and I'm the founder and CEO of Inspire Engage International. Everything starts with a story, so I'm going to tell you a little bit of mine, if the slides let me. So, my history began, I was born in Iran, and I was born during the war, when the bombs were dropping, and on our street, our neighbor's house was actually bombed. The alarm used to go, and my parents used to run into the basement and take cover, and that's how my life began. I'm a war refugee. I'm an asylum seeker. I didn't have anything handed to me on a plate, and we fled. We fled by land and made our journey to Sweden, where I grew up. I... That's cute. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> so... And I lived in Sweden and became passionate about social justice, about things being right. And after a really tragic incident where two men knocked on our door and without checking who was there, my brother opened the door and two men with guns came into our home and kept us at gunpoint. They gagged us and threw us into a wardrobe and told me that if my mother came home while they were still there, they were going to kill her. And so we fled again, we moved again and started from zero, and my mom started with three little children, and, you know, we were on benefits and struggling. And I learned really early on, life is about what you make of it. You have choices, and what you do determines who you become. Nothing is determined for you, not where you come from, not who you are. Nothing is guaranteed. And so when I moved to the UK, English was my third language, and at the age of 13, I became co-founder of the UK Youth Parliament, which is one of the most successful democratic youth organizations with a group of other amazing young people and, and other people. And that became a 10-year journey of me volunteering and giving to the community. I did things like speaking at the United Nations, we did things like change laws and policies, we did things like working and being trained by Desmond Tutu on peace implementation, lots of different things, all about supporting young people to be the change that they want to see. I was blessed, and I loved what I did. And I did 10 years of giving and doing it for free. I didn't want anything in return other than the satisfaction of giving. And I decided, I did a law degree. I have a qualified law degree, and I had a place at Oxford Institute of Legal Practice to do an LPC. I called them up and I said, look, hold my place for a year. I'm just going to go follow my passion in the youth sector and give it a try. I've never looked back. I've never looked back. I love what I do. Somebody asked me today, what is it like being a social entrepreneur? And I said, it's like never having to work. I love it. And so that's what I did. I set up Inspire Engage International, a global social enterprise with a portfolio in over 100 different countries, and we've reached over a million people to date. The rocking chair test. You know when you're old and you're grey and you're sitting in your rocking chair and you're watching daytime TV without a care in the world? Imagine, you want to feel like you made a difference, don't you? You want to feel like your life mattered, like you had impact. That is what the rocking chair test is. So, here's the ethos, Einstein quote, the ethos of which we, we work to. Everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it's going to live its whole life believing that it's stupid, and it's not. Don't let the world to define one route to success for you. You might be an A-star student, you might not be. It's okay. There are so many different routes to success. There are so many different ways that you can be a genius. You just have to be brave enough to find your path, and don't let anybody define that for you. And so how do you do that? How do you go about doing that? You know what the most dangerous thing is? You know what the greatest threat facing us is? Is autopilot living. Living life with your eyes closed and never questioning. This is such a powerful image for me. And you have to question. You have to think about your responsibility to create change. You have to ask questions. Do not go along. You know when you ask people, why do you do what you do? And they say, oh, you know, I just kind of fell into it, or my parents said I should do it, or my friends said, or I've never really thought about it. Well, think about it. Think about it. How do you then determine, how do you stop yourself from leaving autopilot? I'm going to share with you a really simple tool that we use to help you to do exactly that. Okay, so take notes. Right, 
you're going to create something called My Passport, okay? Blank piece of paper, and you write four pieces of information. You write your name at the top, first of all, and then you write your natural strength. You know, in a room full of people, what are you better than average at? Because if you can make that your career, then you're already halfway there. Secondly, what's your passion? Passion alone, it's a very interesting concept, passion. And it's, passion alone doesn't guarantee you success, of course. But if you can make passion your career, then that, that is something really, really valuable, and I'll come back to that. Next one, what's your motto? What's your principle? What do you live by? You know when the winds are changing and people are pushing and oh, everything? What is that thing that will anchor you? What do you stand for? And finally, what's your ultimate goal? Entertain your mind. Let it wander for a second. Just let it come up with whatever that it wants to come up with and write it down and add to it. So that's my passport. And you know, if you go for an interview, forget entrepreneurship. If you go for an interview or any kind of pitch or anything, people are going to be asking why you. This is why you and not seven billion other people. And it's important, very, very important to think about who you are. Identity forms the basis for the decisions that we make in life. It should. And that's what will stop you from living autopilot. So there you go. That's my passport. The social enterprise revolution is here. You know, even till last month, I used to say, the social enterprise revolution is coming. Last month, I changed it. I decided that the social enterprise revolution is already here. So what is social enterprise? Do you guys know? Do you know what social enterprise is? If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know for sure, because I go on about it a lot. Social enterprise, basically, basic definition, business with a good cause. It's a business, it's not a charity, but it does good. It makes money, either for profit or not for profit. But at the heart of the business model is a social mission. What do you feel passionately about? What do you care about? Is it just having something to do for young people? Is it health? Is it hunger? Is it something in your local community, like recycling? These are the things you can turn into a business. You can make money from it. You can turn it into a career. But do good, give back. That's what social enterprise is. Social enterprise is when your head and your heart work together. This is the new dimension of the business world, ladies and gentlemen. It is not a doggy dog world anymore. It's making way for people with hearts who want to care about the money that they make and what they do with that money. So here's an example of a social entrepreneur. On purpose, I picked a girl, and on purpose, I picked somebody who's young. 13 years old, same age as when I started doing what I'm doing. She donates simple. I just want to prove to you that it's simple. You can start simple. She gets donated shoes, she upcycles them, and then sells them. She's creative, she's passionate, she's making money already at the age of 13, and she's making a difference. That's all social enterprise is. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving towards an unrecognizable world. The world is changing. You know, 10, 20 years from now, it will be unrecognizable. So what are the factors that are changing the world? Okay, so first of all, when the chips are down, social enterprises are born. You know, out of real hardship, you know, out of youth unemployment and everything like that, come solutions. We needed a big change. The greatest changes in the world have come from tragedy, have come out of difficulty. And so now that we are facing certain difficulties, Social enterprises are coming as a solution. Secondly, we are moving away from competitive models to more collaborative models. It's all about working together. There's not enough resources to go around. We have to be able to be creative and actually work together. Third point. Hello, my name is Melody, and I'm an Instagram Twitter addict. Hello, Melody. I am, I am, but it's so important. I tell my husband all the time, I need to be on Twitter, I need to be on Instagram. That is how you connect with the world. So we are living, guys, we are living in the world of hashtag follow and share, right? Am I right? That's the world we live in. It is important. That's how people create. Now, you know, talk about change. It's mobilizing through change. Fourthly, the inspiring age passion phenomenon. What is that? You know, a few years ago, Using the word passion at the same time as career was considered really weird, right? And if you Google passion, naughty pictures come up. Moving on, right? But now, 
People are talking about making passion career. They want to do something they love. They don't want to do something they don't love. Life is, you know, God willing long. You want to be going to work every day feeling happy and feeling like you're making a difference. That is important to people's satisfaction about their careers. So people are now, passion phenomenon means people are now making passion their career. And finally, redefining success. Success is no longer a single bottom line. There is now a double bottom line. And that double line, other than the wealth you generate, is also how much value do you have sitting in your social capital bank? What is your social value? That is also a, a, you know, a sign of success. And also, social enterprises when your job feels better than this, walking barefoot in grass with bubbles coming, you know? That is how it should feel. That's how jobs should feel for you. And that's what social enterprise does. Now, we usually do a social enterprise quiz. I don't have time for the whole quiz, but I wanted to do the final question with you, okay? So have a think of the answer, put your hand up, okay? What percentage of social enterprise leadership teams have at least one woman? So this is the senior management team. What percentage have at least one woman? Put your hand up. Who thinks A, 35%? Who thinks B, 85%? Who thinks C, 15%? Few people. And who thinks D, 91%? Okay, majority is D and then 15, so it's a big difference. The answer is D. Well done. 91% of social enterprise leadership teams have at least one woman. That is amazing. That is astounding. Did you know that in the social enterprise sector, did you know that just under 50% of women are CEOs? You know, in the normal business sector, the commercial business sector, it's just 16%. 16, 50%, huge, huge difference. The dynamics of the business world are changing. And so, why? Let's look at why women are different. Because women are different. That's not my opinion. It's a fact. Thank God. Yeah, we need differences, okay? Mars, Venus, that, that thing, yeah, you know girls what I mean. So, the neuropsychologists and the networking experts have shown that women's brains are better networked. We are better at multitasking. We can hear two sounds at once, and also, we have soft power tactics. And these things are essential for social enterprise. These are natural qualities that women have that are better than men. And men have other qualities that are better than women. There's no, there's no competition. It's just that characteristics make you better at social enterprise. And so this is also paving the way. Now, I know this picture is so freaky. I think it's like holding your head up high, something like that. Now, there are challenges though, ladies. There are challenges that we need to overcome. And one of those things is that, you know, success and likability, they are positively correlated when it comes to men. When it comes to women, success and likability are negatively correlated. Um, usually people talk about this study that was done, okay? At Harvard Business School, they had this case study of a lady called Heidi that she, what she did was um, she took contacts from her job and became a really successful venture capitalist, okay? And then they did this study with two groups of students. With one group of students, they gave the real case study with Heidi. The other group of students, they just changed the word Heidi to Howard, okay? A guy's name. Now, what the findings was, when they asked the students, what did you think? They said that both of them have good skills. They're obviously talented. However, when it came to Howard, they said, yeah, we like him. When it came to Heidi, they said, we don't like her, she's too aggressive out for herself. So we have to change that. These are some of the things we need to address. The other thing is that, you know when men are driven, it's like pat on the back. Well, you know if a guy says, I want to be top of the sales league, it's like, well done. When women say it, you're being aggressive. And I experienced that firsthand on The Apprentice. Now, here's what we need to do. Women, ladies, I'm talking to you. We need to become women lovers. We have to support each other. You know what the barrier is? It's not men, it's actually other women. I remember I was in a club once, okay? I saw this girl and she was dressed in amazing clothes. She caught me looking at her and she, and she gave me a really dirty look. So I just went over there. As I'm walking towards her, she was taking off her hoop earrings, trying, ready to fight me, okay? <laughs> I walk over to her and I lean in close because the music's playing and I say, I just wanted to say, you look absolutely fabulous. And you know what? If I had punched her, she would have been less surprised. <laughs> she literally turned 360 degrees, and she was like, 
oh my God, thank you so much. She didn't know what to do with herself. She was like, thank you so much. Oh my God, thank you, I really appreciate it. We need to disarm people with kindness. Be kind to people. Why is it weird to walk over to someone, a stranger, and say, you know what, I really like what you're wearing, or you, look, you, know, you carry yourself really well. That is weird, right? But if you walk over and you say to someone, or you hear conversations like, oh my God, like, what is she doing? Or, Did you hear that? That is not weird. These are the things we have to change. So I'm going to finish off with a little frog story, OK? Lots of, you ha everyone needs a frog story. Lots of frogs at the bottom of the, I'm going to ask you a question, OK, in a minute. Lots of frogs at the bottom of a bucket, right? And they're all like, oh my God, how are we ever going to get out? We're never going to get out of here. Oh my God, what are we going to do? We're never ever going to get out. One little frog from the bottom of the bucket leapt up and jumped out of the bucket. How was the little frog able to do that? Serious question. Shout out. How was he able to do that? Climbing on other frogs to get ahead is not the moral of the story that I'm leaving you with. Seriously, that's not it. Should I tell you what the answer is? And I think somebody said it. Exactly. The little frog was deaf. Don't let anyone define reality for you. Don't let, there's always going to be people who tell you it's impossible. It's because it hasn't been done yet. That's why nobody's done it. It's impossible until it's done. Define reality for yourself. Your perception determines your reality. You're in control of your perception. Think about that. Think about your social responsibility. And so, social enterprises when, and I'm doing this right now, going to work is your good deed of the day. And finally, look at the time, I have one minute, perfect. <laughs> I'm going to do the social enterprise anthem with you guys. I do this all over the world. I need you to put everything down and get standing up. Everybody get up. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Everybody, if you can, stand up. Brilliant. OK, here's what's going to happen, OK? I'm going to say something. You're going to repeat after me. I want it loud and clear. I want energy, passion. OK, give me passion. But when I say my name, you say your name, unless your name is Melody, in which case, come and see me afterwards, okay? I want to meet you, okay? So when I say my name, you say your name. Other than that, you repeat after me. Ready to roll? Okay, this is the short way. I haven't got time for the, look at me, 48 seconds. Let's go. Okay, right, so, ready? One day, one day. One day, one day. Someone said. Someone said. Melody. Melody. Do something good. Do something good. Using, your left hand. Using your left hand. Brilliant. You've been absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you.